Hello friends, my name is Dr. Sales Tumar. I am going to uh, take the urology classes for search test. I scored NEET SS 2021 rank 1 in MCH urology. So we are going to do thoroughly the all the Bailey chapters uh, for NEET SS 2022. So this is the famous quote by Swami Vivekanand, rise awake and stop not until the goal is reached. So I believe if I can do, anyone can do. Now in the chapter 75, uh, we are going to start the symptomatology and investigation. So certain things and certain points are important in the chapter. So I am focusing on that point, which might be a potential MCQ for your NEAT SS. So now in the pain, the word is dysuria. So what is dysuria? Dysuria is experienced during voiding. So the term voiding is important. So dysuria is not experienced during when the bladder is full, is experienced during voiding. And the one important other word is carcinoma in C2. When the patient is having carcinoma in C2, the typical symptom is dysuria. So in the question, like case scenario, when you find the carcinoma in C2 and dysuria, you should think about carcinoma in C2. So these are the important words which can be MCQ can be asked and framed. Now there is a two different uh, pain uh, which Bailey mentions uh, differently, which is a potential MCQ. The one is renal pain and the same as the second one is the ureteric colic. Although both are not same, but both can be present simultaneously. And the important part is history can be differentiate both the pain. So this line is important. Nowadays they are putting the line MCQs and to do what is true and false. So this line, history can be differentiating both the pain is important. Now characteristic about renal pain. Renal pain is constant at the simultaneously ureteric pain is colic in nature. So it's on and off, on and off, but renal pain is constant. Renal pain is not radiating, but ureteric colic is radiating. Now the important point is ureteric colic is not radiating to the back of the leg and the chest. These are the potential MCQs. Ureteric colic is not radiating to the back of the leg and the chest. And the renal pain is felt at the renal angle. And the cause of the renal pain is the uh, inflammation of the parenchyma, uh, infections of the parenchyma, and all those things. So they are felt at the renal angle. But ureteric colic, when there is an obstruction at the by the stone, by the blood clot, then the distension of the, the whole ureter and those all those things, they are going to get a colicky pain. So these are the important points in the pain renal and ureteric colic. Now the next pain is uh, suprapubic pain. So important point is when the bladder is full, at that time patient get pain and relieved by micturation. It's the same as opposite to the dysuria. Dysuria is when the bladder is voiding, but the suprapubic pain is when the bladder is full. So these are the two contradictory pain you should remember. And suprapubic pain is mostly due to the interstitial cystitis. The young female, 40 year old female having typical suprapubic pain and relieved by micturation is called interstitial cystitis. You should think about interstitial cystitis. So you can get to the interstitial cystitis and after this you can solve the MCQ. Another, another part of the pain is testicular torsion. So now we move towards testicular pain. Testicular pain is most commonly due to the torsion, but the important point is it is not due to the testicular torsion. It is due to the torsion of the hydrated of morgagni. This is the mistake where all students can oftenly do. So most common pain in the testis is a torsion of the hydrated of morgagni, not the torsion of the testis. At the same time, hydrocele and epididymosis is not painful. So this can be is important. Varicocele is not painful, but having dragging sensation. So in the questions, when you see the word like dragging sensation, you should think about varicocele. And the important point in the varicocele is when you do varicocelectomy, 10% patients having short term pain and 1% of the patients having long term pain. These are the two numerical value you should remember. The all the all numerical value is not important, but the numerical values given in the Bailey and I, 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 cover, I cover all numericals values which is important 
and which is the potential MCQs. So these are two values is important. 10 term short term, 10 percent short term pain and 1 percent long term pain. These are asked multiple times, my friends. Another term is perineal pain. So perineal pain is due to the complex uh, chronic prostatic pain syndrome. So it is felt in the perineal area. Now we are going to uh, start the simultaneously MCQ. So you can you can have a better knowledge this, the topic and you can get you can get better understanding of the topic. So now the question is, which of the following is a not the classical features of the storage type of LUTS? Now now pain. Now the, we are moving toward the symptomatology. So LUTs is dividing into the storage and voiding LUTs. Okay. So now we can see the options A frequency, B urge incontinence, C hesitancy, D nocturia. So we we can we can now see the answer is hesitancy. So now storage storage LUTs is simply remembered as a FUN. F means frequency, U means urgency, urge incontinence, and means nocturia. And voiding LUTs is simply remember as a HRS. H means hesitancy, R means reduced stream, and S means training. So any point in the Bailey when the three condition is given, three classification is given, three type of cause is given, there is a potential MCQ because examiner can set because this type of this type of topic can easy to do frame a mcq for examiner because they can introduce a fourth term and can easily frame the mcq so lower unit rec symptoms can divide into storage and voiding LUTs. so frequency urgency urge incontinence nocturia is a storage LUTs, and uh, hesitancy reduced stream and straining is a voiding LUTs. now uh, we can divide we, we can already seen the storage LUTs and voiding LUTs. Now there is a two different lower unit rec symptoms like post micturation dribbling and sense of incomplete evacuation. Bailey specifically mentioned these two are not included into the storage and voiding LUTs. So these are the potential MCQ you should remember about this. This MCQ is framing on the post micturation dribbling LUTs. So a 72 year old gentleman Mr. Radhakrishnan has a BPH for which he underwent TURP. He is still having post micturation dribbling. This is due to due to inadequate TURP, contraction of the spongy urethra, contraction of the membranous urethra, none. So after the TURP, after TURP, the only LUTs which are not going to relieved is post micturation dribbling. This is due to because of the contraction of the spongy urethra, contraction of the spongy urethra. This is because of why? Because we are not building the urethra in the in the surgery of TURP. So after TURP, you relieved the voiding LUTs, but this is not post micturition dribbling is not included into the voiding LUTs. So this can be asked as a MCQ multiple times. This is very important, my friends. Remember this. As we previously mentioned, contraction of the smooth muscle of the spongy and bulbar urethra causing incomplete emptying leads to post micturition dribbling. These are not relieved by TURP in BPH. As we previously mentioned, this type of storage and voiding LUTs divided and the important point and important, important thing in this slide is nocturia. What is the definition of the nocturia? Nocturia is at least one void at the night. This is the important. You should wake up one time before the sleep and after urinate, you should have sleep. This is called nocturia and more than one nocturia like two times is clinical significance you should think about disease clinical significance these are the terms collectively collectively put under the subject of LUTS strangury urgency urge incontinence stress incontinence nocturnal enuresis nocturnal enuresis is involuntary loss of the urine during night during the sleeping and nocturia is voluntarily lost. You have to wake up and go to the urinate. Resistancy, reduced urine from intermittency straining, incomplete emptying, and as we previously discussed, post micturation dribbling is due to the bulbal urethra, not relieved by TURP. Now, very important topic, my friend. 
Immaturia is very important topic. You can surely get one MCQ on this topic. This is very, very important. So, Immaturia Bailey has given the very short form like TIN. Causes of the Immaturia Bailey given TIN. T means trauma. I means infections. And N means neoplasm. So, hematuria is very frequent complaint for the urological patient. These are the three main cause for the hematuria. So, hematuria as a broad term can divide it into the visible and non-visible hematuria. You can broadly divide it them into the patient into the patient is having visible hematuria and non-visible hematuria. So, visible hematuria is easily visible and patient can see the his urine is red. Non-visible hematuria is diagnosed by microscopy. So, the value and the criteria for to stamp as a non-visible hematuria is more than or equal to 3 RBC per high power field. These are these values are given in Campbell. These are not given in Bailey. This is the important. It can be asked. And timing of the hematuria is important. So, the questions, they are going to scenario and they are mentioning patient is having at the initiation of the urination patient is having hematuria. What is the pathology? Where is the location of the pathology? This is location of pathology in urethra. And the patient is having throughout the hematuria. The pathology is bladder and kidney. At the terminal part of the urination, the pathology is a bladder, neck and the prostate. These are going to get a MCQ. This is the potential MCQ you can get. Now, what should you do? Patient came with hematuria. You can diagnose the hematuria, gross, non-visible. You can differentiate. Now, what, what investigation you should do for this hematuria patient? Remember, my friends, patients came with hematuria, you should do CT urography. This is the basic investigation you should do because patient is having gross hematuria. 20% of the patient is having cancer. These are the data given in the Bailey. You can get MCQ. And cystoscopy is also should be done. This given in the camp bell. But in the Bailey, instead of CT urography, the USC should be done. So both can be done. But in Campbell, you, if, if you find in the answer, in the options, CT urography, you should go with CT urography. But if you find in the options, USG, you should go with the USG. And if you suspect CIS, like patient is having dysuria, more than 35 year old, patient is having smoker, male, you should think about these are the risk factor for malignancy. So, in this type of patient, you should do cytology. Cytology. Now, this, this is the investigation required for gross hematuria. Now, what should you do for microscopic hematuria? At the same time, patient is having gross or microscopic. CT urography is the answer. Is the first step you should do. At required to daily, you should do USG. But if you have an answer like CT urography in the options, you should go with CT urography. And see less than 5% of the patients with microscopic hematuria having cancer. So, this 20% and 5% data are important because questions multiple time ask because how many patients with gross hematuria having cancer is 20%. How many patients with microscopic hematuria having cancer this is less than 5%. So, these are the important points. You can surely get MCQ on these points, my friends. So, remember, this is very important. At the same time, cystoscopy is a very invasive procedure. So, in the microscopic hematuria, you should not do cystoscopy in all patients. So, what patients you should do cystoscopy? So, patient is having smoking history, more than 35 years of age. Patient is having dysuria, CIS symptoms. So, you can do cystoscopy because chances of malignancy is more in microscopic hematuria with the patient like presenting like this. So, this is the important this is the management part is important, timing is important and non-visible hematuria definition is important, my friends. Now, we are going to uh, solve this MCQ. A 25 year old, remember the all content and all information in the question is important in the case-based questions. Now, see the patient's age is 25 year. So, patient is very young. Gentleman presented with the clinically immediately after an episode of the hematuria. Okay. He had just completed a marathon. Now, this is important line. He has completed a marathon. Patient is a long runner. Okay. Half hour ago. He is stable. Now, patient is stable. That means, patient is not deteriorating. And it is passing normal urine, uh, normal urine immediately after. That means, 
patient is is not having continuous hematuria patient passed after the marathon patient passed some hematuria portions and now patient is completely completely normal what is the next best step now what what you should do uh you should do ct urography for the ureter uh, kidney bladder okay cystoscopy okay ivp now the point is the key point is complete marathon runner patient is marathon runner so in the bailey there is given if the patient is marathon runner patient may have some part of hematuria which is managed by conservatively so you should not go through searching of the what is the cause of hematuria so this patient required no evaluation because patient is young patient is not having risk factor for malignancy so why you bother about cystoscopy ivp is not done nowadays for the hematuria so you can exclude the, this both symptoms you can exclude the both options and so now you can have answer from this too so this is the important you should have to evaluate the options and you should have thoroughly knowledge to how to exclude the two options now you are going to have a 50 50 chance 50 50 chances to get correct so the answer is no evaluation because bailey there is specific condition mentions patient is marathon runner and patient is uh, having this type of hematuria there is no evaluation required is a self limiting conditions this is called march hematuria after the marathon runner runner's bladder marathon hematuria stress hematuria resolved within, within the 24 to 70 hours hours post exercise and this statement is important if not resolved within the 7 days if not resolved within the 7 days then the whole you have to go for the standard evaluation of the microscopic hematuria workup so this concept is very important my friends now we can see the second question on the hematuria a young woman see the young patient woman patient in general surgery opd presented with hematuria but no other clinical findings what is the next best step for investigations a gynecological opinions b urine examination alone c urine examination plus usg d usg plus cystoscopy we already know the in the options if you find usg or ct urography you should go with these options so already a and b is excluded because in this a and b no usg or no uct urography was there so we have only two options c or d so i want to go for d options because there is a second option is cystoscopy so rather the they are not mentioning the they are not mentioning the anything you can do with usg plus cystoscopy the all patients with hematuria except young woman with prevent proven uti should undergo usg plus flexible cystoscopy to rule out malignancy so this statement is important as we previously described now previously see previously i i i, I tell this in the patient with visible hematuria what is the probability of malignancy so probability of malignancy is 20% if the patient is having non visible hematuria the probability is less than 5% so these are the important area mcq can asked every time they are focusing on the hematuria topic the hematuria topic is very important my friends now small topic is discoloration of the urine patients have a multiple discoloration of the urine like pink colored urine yellow colored urine brown colored urine so nitrofurantoin and metronidazole have patients having brown colored urine rifampicin patients having orange colored urine hemoglobinuria myoglobinuria patients having pink colored urine so this can be asked as a straight forward one liner mcq now another point is hematospermia hematospermia is blood in seminal fluid so what is the pathology what is the cause cause is at the prostate either it can be a prostatitis or it can be a benign prostatic hyperplasia so what is remember in this hematospermia you should do triple investigation three are together DRE plus PSA plus TRUS. These three investigations should be done in all patients with hematospermia. But the important point is this condition is self-limiting, so you should not worry about. But you should do all investigations. These are written in Bailey, so it is important patient present with hematospermia. You should do all investigation. You should not leave patient alone. Now the part is hematuria. Hematuria is gas in the urine. and the mcq multiple time asked please what is the most common cause most common cause is colovesical fistula what is the pathology pathology is not cancer my friend diverticulitis is the pathology 
every time students make mistake not cancer diverticulitis even i do mistake myself multiple times if the patient is presenting with right sided colovesical fistula then you should think about ileum crohn's disease and the other small word is urethral syndrome what is urethral syndrome patient is having uti symptoms with negative bacteriology bacteriology is negative and this management is simple cystoscopy with urethral dilatation no antibiotic required if he can get confuse you with antibiotic and all those things required simple cystoscopy and urethral dilatation now we are move we are going to move towards specific organ so now test is as we previously see most common cause is torsion of hydatid of morgagni now the mcq is what is the sign that is seen in testicles test torsion of the hydatid of morgagni it's called blue dot sign this mcq asked multiple times another mcq is in the torsion what is the most common cause is a bell clapper deformity so what is bell clapper deformity test is, is hanging at the bell in the temple so it is more prone towards the torsion and the important point is cremasteric reflex is lost in the testicular torsion this is asked in april ems in neat ss super speciality exam what is the different be difference between torsion of the hydatid of morgagni and torsion of the testis in the torsion of the hydatid of morgagni cremasteric reflex is maintained this is the important word you should remember this torsion of the testis cremasteric reflex lost now the epididymis so important point is rather the most common cause of uti most common bacteria involved in the uti is e coli but the important point is what is cause epididymitis in sexually active male male with the age of 25 to 35 years of the age is chlamydia not e coli e coli is a generalized term generalized bacteria causing all uti but in sexually active male the chlamydia is the bacteria and the epididymis involving in the tb having typical features of nodular induration and sinus is formed in the posterior aspect because epididymis is located into the posterior laterally to the testis so sinus is always located on the posterior aspect but at the same time syphilis sinus is involved in the anterior aspect this mcq is asked in multiple times because syphilis primary involves the testis now spermatic cord so 10% of the varicose cells presented on the left side why because you, you can see this images this is the gonadal vein this is the adrenal vein so on the left side anatomy is different than the right side on the left side the the gonadal and the adrenal vein opening directly into the left renal vein but in the right side they are open into the ivc so they are not connected to the renal vein but in the right side they are inserted into the renal vein left renal vein so what is the problem the problem is if the patient is having pathology in the kidney patient is having thrombus in the renal vein the pressure is going to directly transmitted into the gonadal vein so patient is having more prone to varicocele on the left side so this is the important advantage an important problem in the left side but the important advantage of this is you can have a left kidney for transplant because left renal vein is longer than the right renal vein so always left kidney is preferred over right kidney for the transplant and you can ligate easily the left renal vein because left renal vein has a collateral so blood can go to the adrenal vein blood return and the and gonadal vein and the adrenal vein so no problem for the blood return you can easily ligate the left left renal vein in any procedure but at the same time you cannot ligate the right renal vein because right renal vein is only blood return for the right kidney now <clears throat> we are going we are see the prepuce prepuce is the covering of the glans penis is called foreskin so important point is phimosis is tight ring and the prepuce cannot revert back over the glans penis so important point is up to 4 years it is physiological so up to 4 years there is a secretion and there is adhesion between the prepuce and the glans penis so you should not worry about up to 4 years after the 4 years it is pathological when the patient develop pink bxo 
BXO is a chronic cicatrizing scaring conditions over the TPS in the glans penis. So up to four years, pymosis is physiological. You should not worry about about it. And after four years, you can intervene. And the paraphymosis is tightly constricted skin can is retracted but cannot revert back over the glans penis. So this is the surgical emergency. You should do intervene immediately. And if you delay it, glans can necrose. Now you can see this is the now they are going to ask the image based questions very frequently so i cover the all important aspects in the image as well so this is the anatomy of the penis so you can see this is the corpora cavernosa this is the corpus spongiosum containing the urethra you can see this is the layer of the tunica albuginea so tunica albuginea is the bilayered outer longitudinal and inner circular muscle layer but the important point is at the ventral, this is the ventral aspect of the penis. This is the dorsal aspect of the penis. At the ventral aspect of the penis, there is a the, there is only one layer longitudinal muscle. There is a no circular layer of the tunica albuginea. So this part is very weak in the penis. So penis can bend. Penis can bend ventrally like this because this part is weak. So injury frequently occur at the dorsal aspect of the penis. So what is the cause? The injury is occurring the dorsal aspect of the penis. There is a healing process of the process of the dorsal aspect of the tunica albuginea. So peron is plaque and the penile fracture is most common on the dorsal aspect of the penis. These are the MCQ. This can be asked. And the peron is this is, is the healing process of the tunica albuginea. But important statement written in the Bailey is fibrosis in corpora cavernosa of the penis. So you can frame a MCQ. What is peronis This is peronis This is a fibrosis in the corpora cavernosa of the penis. This can ask the MCQ. And what is the treatment management? So nest bit operation. So in the nest bit operation, you should correct the cordy and the curvature of the peronis This is of the penis. So you should correcting by the ligating and the, the suture is taken over the dorsal aspect at the wet point 12 o'clock 12 o'clock of the dorsal aspect you should fix the suture and correct the dorsal cordy why 12 o'clock because 12 o'clock is a nerve free zone no neurovascular bundle neurovascular bundle is located on the slightly laterally 11 and 1 o'clock positions so you can get sutures or the 12 o'clock positions so these are the important areas which might be framing a MCQ in Pyronis disease. Now moving towards the what is penal fracture. So as we know penile fracture most common location is dorsal aspect of the penis and uh, uh, tear in the tunica albuginea. And important point is what is eggplant deformity. Eggplant deformity is seen in the penal fracture. You can see over this. This is called eggplant deformity. When the penis is get fractured, but the buck fascia is intact. So this is important point. And the blood get accumulated under the buck fascia and looks like eggplant. So this is called eggplant deformity. You should be immediately repair the penile fracture because delay in the repairing causes erectile dysfunction. After some patient presented with penal fracture and typically having popping sound during sexual intercourse and having <coughs> bleeding in the urethra. So when you suspect the patient with having penile fracture and bleeding in urethra, you should suspect about urethral injury. So before the repair of the penile fracture, you should be evaluating the urethra and you should make sure the urethra is intact. So you should do RGU or intraoperative flexible cystoscopy to identify the where is the urethra is get injured and both can repair simultaneously. So you should think about this. Now going towards glans penis. So as we all know glans penis is the most common area of the SCC is glans penis. You should be remember this is the MCQ and what is the is 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 caused by HPV 6 and 11 and malignancy is caused by SCC is caused by HPV 16 and 18 and HPV 16 is a most common. Now carcinoma in C2 condition they are given specific name towards the carcinoma in C2 like erythroplasia of curate and bovine disease. So as we remember this is multiple time asked the bovine disease uh, bovine disease as we remember the B for the body. So this is seen in the body of the penis and erythroplasia of curate is in the glans penis. 
both the condition are the same but the location is different rather than both the condition is carcinoma in situ location is only different so this can be asked as mcq as a urethra we can see this image is the epispadias this image is for hypospadias so when you see the hypospadias is there is abnormal ventral opening of the urethral meatus dorsal hoodie and the ventral cody these are the three cardinal features of the hypospadiasis so any 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 place when the three situation is given is a potential mcq should be patient the examiner can frame questions very easily to insert the fourth one this image is given for epispadiasis there is a dorsal defect in the urethra now uh, word towards urethral diverticulum urethral diverticulum is out pouching in the urothelium lined urethra it is more commonly seen in the female what is the mcq is the most investigation of choice is mri and one catheter is used in urethral diverticulum is davis stratoner catheter it is given in campbell so this can be a picture based mcq you can see this is a two bulb one bulb is for bladder neck another bulb is for distal just distal to the urethra so you can easily insert the dye with the channel and you can easily identify the lumen of the urethral and the anatomy of the urethral diverticulum so this is catheter used specifically for diagnosis of the urethral catheter urethral diverticulum at the same time this is this is the lapidus catheter you can see this is the bulb and this is the one centimeter marking over the proximal part of the bulb so you can measure the female urethra length by this marking this is specifically used for to measure the length of the female urethra this is called lapidus catheter lapidus is also famous for clean intermittent catheterization this concept is given by lapidus when the patient is having neurogenic bladder and all the stroma patient there is a previously in 1950s there is a there is a there is a process called continuous catheterization but in the continuous catheterization patient have multiple problems like stone malignancy and chronic inflammation infections so lapidus gives the give the good idea about intermittent catheterization with the intermittent catheterization the future the malignancy risk is very low and the patient's comfort is very high so this is the huge interventions in the term of urology lapidus catheter clean intermittent catheterization now this image is, is urethral caruncle urethral caruncle is a prolapse of the urethra this is in the female you can be confused with this image with ectopic ureter ectopic ureter is also looks like same so you should be differentiating with clinical examinations and this condition is not required any treatment important part is that if there is a big enough and there is a causing problem you should excise the urethral prolapse mucosa now we move towards investigations so routine blood investigation you should do serum creatinine all electrolyte you should think you should do and the important point is nowadays kidney kidney function evaluation is done by egfr you can comparatively measure the gfr this is the way the now investigation is done in kidney because the very minute fluctuation in the serum creatinine in like 0.2 and 0.3 there is a huge fluctuation in the egfr egfr can fluctuate between 20 to 90 so accurate function of the kidney can be done by egfr there is a formula called mdrd formula modified disease renal modified diet and renal disease formula so you should be you should be know about content of the mdrd formula mdrd formula content remember is a full form short form is sars s means sex age means a means age r means race and s means serum creatinine so this can be asked and this is asked in november m super specialty examinations what is the formula for the mdrd and the one age is missing so you should be remember s a r s sex age rest and serum creatinine one important line given in belly cisplatin is a chemotherapeutic drug but it is very nephrotoxic you should not give cisplatin if patients egfr is less than 50 this is frame as a mcq and frame as a line in the mcq option in the mcq two important statement given in the belly 
like with both kidney functioning normally individual have approximately six times of the renal functions needed to remain of the dialysis this is the important statement normally functioning kidney do better six times than the dialysis kidney and serum creatinine will remain normal with unilateral pathology but normally functioning contralateral kidney if your one kidney is properly not properly functioning other kidney is normal creatinine is normal so when you think about altered creatinine you should think about both kidneys affecting or the lower urinary tract is affecting so it can it can it can be <coughs> it effect on the both kidney like lower urinary tract urethra bph so if the one kidney is normal your creatinine should be normal now we are moving towards this mcq now which of the following is not true regarding biochemical assessment of the renal function renal functions so now this type of mcq they are more common because they are now changing the most common and all those simple simple mcqs are not 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 frequently asked nowadays this type of mcqs directly picking line from the book standard textbook this type of mcq is now asked so we can we can go to the options one by one option a egfr is a optimal method for reporting the renal function okay now you can see question asked is not true so these are the key words in this type of questions not true except all are true except all are true except these you should be very vigilant about this word because if question looks very simple but you cannot if if you not if you not give this time to this this point you can get normal questions wrong which can get you a worse rank my friend remember my friend so egfr is a optimal method for reporting renal functions okay uh, modified modification of the diet in the renal disease study equation is used as a age yes sex yes yes race yes and standardized gfr no not a standardized gfr serum creatine into estimate the standardized gfr so these words are interchangeable so this option is wrong this option is wrong as we previously know egfr is optimal method for reporting renal function yes this is absolutely true as we previously know patient with cisplatin therapy should have gfr more than or equal to 50 ml per minute yes we previously know this is absolutely directly line pick from the belly and low and serum creatinine will remain the normally with the unilateral renal pathology with the normal functioning contralateral kidney this statement is also true so you don't you, you you should not remember this numerical value but you should remember the what is the content of the mdrd formula now very important topic my dear friends tumor marker in the tumor marker the psa there is one question definitely sure so in every exam they are going to ask the psa and all those psa derivatives and all those things the psa any any in the belly any chapter you find psa is the important point an important topic you should remember because question are very found to ask on the psa so in the psa every line is important every line is potential mcq there can lift a direct line from the belly and low so prostate specific antigen the location of the chromosome is 19 q so you should be remember p is taken by psa so what is left q so 19 q is the psa chromosome and what is the function of the psa liquefaction of the seminal fluid is the function of the psa what you should remember is psa is the organ specific not disease specific psa can rise in every condition of the prostate like benign prostatic hyperplasia prostatitis and ca prostate so psa is the organ specific not disease specific this can this is not written in the belly this is line from the campbell you should ask about this and the important part is finasteride phi alpha reductase inhibitor you should the patient is taking drug like finasteride for the bph psa value is half in the 6 month so you can you can get actual psa by, by multiplying 2 this is asked multiple times my friend so remember this and aspirin statin and thiazides are also affecting the psa this is also important this is the 3 and he can frame a mcq as inserting the fourth drug and recent uti the psa is altered but after the 6 week of the treatment psa is going to get normal 
so now new recommendation for the biopsy is if the patient is between the 50 to 69 years old and the PSA is 3 nanogram per ml you should do biopsy and other recommendation is if you do PR and you palpate the abnormality and nodularity of the prostate then you should do directly biopsy it is not required the PSA recommendation abnormality in the PSA abnormality in the DRE is a direct in direct indication for biopsy now we can go through this MCQ for the PSA which of the following statement is not true regarding the PSA as we all know PSA is the glycoprotein yes infection leads to transient rise in PSA yes we already know after the six PSA looks normal DRE can alter the PSA level okay we can get through it lowering in the main taking fire for it is inhibitor for the long time yes we already know so PSA cannot alter by digital rectal examination PSA can altered by trans rectal prostate biopsy but it cannot alter by simple DRE so you should remember this statement now this is the PSA derivatives now the PSA is secreted in the prostatic epithelial cell like pre pro PSA then it converted and hydrolyzed and proteolyzed into the pre PSA so what is pre PSA pre, pre PSA is minus 7 pro PSA minus 4 pro PSA minus 2 pro PSA benign PSA intact PSA and some PSA get complexed into the blood like PSA antichymotrypsin PSA alpha 2 methylglobulin PSA antiprotease inhibitor so in the prostate the problem is PSA escape the proteolysing and hydrolyzing pro the procedure so percentage of the pre PSA is decreased in the CA prostate it is not that this in the CA prostate the raise is PSA is due to the increase the production of the PSA it is due to the escape the hydrolysis process of the PSA so this is the important area and important line you should understand and PSA derivatives nowadays the MRI MP MRI is a huge understand about the CA prostate so nowadays they are not going to use the PSA derivatives but PSA derivatives is used in when to do biopsy when to do MP MRI when the patient is falling in the gray area what is the gray area gray area is 50 to 69 year old patients at the P digital rectal examination is normal and the PSA value is 4 to 10 what you should do you should do biopsy or not at that time you should do this type of PSA derivatives and you can get the idea about which patient required biopsy so what is PSA prostatic health index prostatic health index contains minus 2 PSA pre PSA and total PSA so you can remember by 2 F PSA so this is the important PSA density is amount of PSA which is present the amount of the volume of the PA, volume of the prostate gland so more than 0 0.15 nanogram per mg is the risk high risk value for the PSA density as same as PSA what is PSA velocity PSA velocity is amount of PSA increased during the year so 0 0.75 increased PSA velocity is the risk factor is the high risk area you should think about it you should do biopsy you should do patient on the follow -up. at the same time what is PSA doubling time when patient presented you intervene the localized prostate cancer like radical prostatectomy radiotherapy and all other things how you should monitor the patient so this is the derivatives PSA doubling time it is same as the thyroglobulin when you do total thyroidectomy how you monitor the patient thyroglobulin at the same time in the, this CA prostate PSA doubling time so when you do radical prostatectomy the lowest value which achieved by the patient is called nadir PSA nadir PSA so at, at the nadir PSA what times PSA takes to take double the PSA value it's called PSA doubling time so less time for doubling the PSA is the high risk metastatic recurrence and the more time PSA takes to double the value is called local failure so up to three to six months it is called metastatic failure and up to 12 months it take it is called local failure so this this can you can monitor the PS doubling time with how aggressive the disease is what should you should you do what is the exact metastatic failure and all those things 
at the same time pca3 is the urinary marker for ca prostate and tempress erg fusion gene is a specific for ca prostate tempress2 gene is a specific for prostate but tempress erg fusion is the most common fusion anomaly in the ca prostate and the highly specific for ca prostate is 100% specific if you diagnose the tempress erg gene fusion you are 100% sure the patient is having ca prostate so now we are going to take this mcq which of the following is not true regarding psa okay PSA is also known as a calcarin 3. It is the second name of the PSA. This is true. It is encoded on the chromosome 19. Okay. Lower percentage of the free PSA associated with prostate cancer as we previously know. PSA in the CA prostate escape the hydrolysis procedure. So, free PSA is much lower. Okay. This is also true. PSA doubling time is useful for the men who are not active surveillance and plan for further management. Yes, you have previously shown PSA doubling time is useful marker for the follow-up of the patient in the CA prostate. Prostatic health index is inversely related to the probability of prostate cancer. Yo, this is wrong. Prostatic health index is directly related. Increase the prostatic health index is the risk factor for the CA prostate. It is not inversely related. So, as you can see, this is the complex PSA. This is the free PSA. In the complex PSA, you can see the alpha 1 antichymotrypsin, alpha 2 macroglobulin, alpha 1 protease inhibitor. The most amount is alpha 1 antitrypsin, 60 to 90 percent. And at the same time, free PSA is B, benign PSA, NIC PSA, intake PSA, IPSA. This is raised in the benign disease. So, question is asked what is raised in the malignancy? Malignancy, the pro PSA. And the complex PSA is raised in the malignancy. And what is raised in the benign condition? Free PSA, B PSA, intact PSA is raised in the benign condition. And another term is human calcarin 2. It is the same as the PSA, but it used in, in, in degrading the PSA. It is called HK2. So, HK2 marker is used for the measure the highly aggressive and poorly differentiated prostate cancer so if patient is having high hk2 its main patient is high aggressive and poorly differentiated prostate cancer as you previously described prostatic health index prostatic density psa velocity psa doubling time tempress erg fusion pca3 gene now uh, we can see this mcq 57 year old gentleman V says Prasad is diagnosed with BPH. Okay, patient is having BPH. He has been medically managed past 4 months with phenasteroid 1 mg per day and temsulosin in 0.4 mg per day. He visited a urology clinic for routine checkup and PSA is 3 nanogram per ml. Other parameters are normal. He has not undergone any biopsy and there is no evidence of descend UTI. Calculate his true PSA value. Okay, now we can see there is a four month here taking five alpha lactase inhibitor. So his actual PSA is doubled because of due to the phenasteroid PSA already is a half. So you have to multiply it by two. So his actual PSA is six nanogram per ml. Now these three are the testicular tumor marker: alpha fetoprotein, beta HCG, and LDH. The half life of these three tumor markers is very important. Alpha fetoprotein half life is 5 to 7 days. Beta HCG is 24 to 36 hours. LDH is 24 hours. So, alpha protein is raised in YET. This is the short form. Y means yolk sac tumor. E means embryonal cell carcinoma. T means teratoma. And beta HCG is raised in embryonal cell carcinoma and choriocarcinoma. And LDH is presenting the bulk of the tumor. LDH is raised, the bulkness of the tumor is raised. So, you can get MCQ on the half-life of this tumor and which tumor have a specific tumor marker. So, you can remember like alpha fetoprotein is raised in YET and beta HCG is raised in EC. Now, we move towards urine analysis. So, important point is, is there any patient presenting with LUTs what sample you should take? You should take midstream sample of the urine early morning. So, two separate urine examinations should be given. One is for microscopy, one is for culture. Culture required six weeks. This is given in Campbell. 
uh, this I put because I think this can be MCQ and the patient with LUTs and prostatitis how you should get sample sample like VB1 is an initial urethral sample VB2 is the bladder sample and then you collect this two test tube then after this you can do prostatic massage and the secretion immediately after the prostatic massage is called express expressing prostatic secretions and after that you have get VB3 sample for the prostatic urethra. So this is called mere stem is four glass test for prostatitis. Now early morning urine, urine sample is used for diagnosis of tuberculosis. You should take the three consecutive day urinary sample. Now the question is what is the ideal method for collecting a urinary sample? Now I have to emphasize the word ideal. You should you should be you should be knowing the word like ideal what is the next investigation what is the next best investigation these are three different term and the question answer is different or these three different pattern of the questions what is the first investigation what is the next investigation what is the next best investigation so carefully you need to read the question Specimen after the early morning first weighted sample? No. Midday urine sample? No. Midstream urine sample? Yes. But when? Early morning. So D is the answer. So midstream clean catch sample. But when? First morning voided urinary sample is useful. Now, the important concept asymptomatic bacteriuria. This is not given in the uh, daily. Uh, patient is having you can urine analysis the patient's urine you can have a culture and bacteria but patient is not having any symptom this is called asymptomatic bacteria you should not worry about this but only and only two conditions you should worry about the asymptomatic bacteria one is pregnancy and the other one is you should when you try to intervene the urological procedure like urs and turp these are the two conditions where, should, where you should treat the asymptomatic bacteria other than any other condition you should not bother you should not worry about this so this can get as an mcq so the option is pregnancy yes required definitely required in pregnancy old age no incontinence no catheterized patient no in the first trimester of the pregnancy you should screen the patient urine analysis up to the 12 week if the patient is having asymptomatic bacteria, you should treat patients, pregnant patients, because the risk of pyelonephritis is very, very high in the case of the pregnant patients and deteriorating teratogenic fetal effect and the very devastating effect is seen in the pregnancy. So you should treat asymptomatic bacteria in pregnancy and the patients, you want to intervene, you want to remove digestion, you want to remove Urethary removal of stone, you want to do TURP, asymptomatic bacteria should be treated. As you can see, the incidence of 30% of the affected woman having pyelonephritis when patient is having asymptomatic bacteria. This is the important statement you should know. This question can be asked is a very important topic, my friend. As we this diagram and this table is directly picked from Campbell. As you see, all conditions not require treatment. Only two conditions which are highlighted like pregnant woman and urological intervention. These two conditions require treatment. Now, what's about cytology? The problem of the cytology is high false negative rate. And cytology has very high detection rate of the high grade TCC. It is not as much as useful as a low grade TCC, but as, as much as useful as high grade TCC because 15% of the low grade TCC only diagnosed by the cytis, cytology. Rather, the value is very high 50% of the high grade TCC diagnosed by the cytology. So, the grade is increasing, the detection of the cytology is also increasing. So, cytology is per se highly specific and the classification used for to detect bladder carcinoma the cytology based classification is called paris classification at the same time your tumor marker is highly sensitive 
highly sensitive cytology highly specific tumor marker is highly sensitive now what's about endoscopy so this picture based mcq now mostly ask they are going to ask the image and all those pathological condition instrument image so you can see this is the telescope and this is a cystoscope now cystoscope is available in 0 30 12 and 70 degree according to the degree there is a different different uses for the cystoscope like 0 degree use for urethra 12 degree use for urethra 30 degree use for turp and any urological investigation procedure and 70 degree use for bladder neck because it has an angled view so you can see backward and forwards behind the bladder neck so you can see this is the telescope this is the camera camera this is the light source cable wire is fitted over here this is the camera camera is fitted over here this is the sheath sheath you can insert the you can insert the telescope into the sheath of the camera so this is the bridge to connect the telescope sheath and in the in the telescope so this is the flexible cystoscopy you can see you can it, it it, it can ask as a direct pick and mcq and uh, you can see you can have a mount over the handle part of the flexible cystoscopy you can have a intuitive and counter intuitive clockwise and anti-clockwise movement so you can modulate the tip so this is called flexible cystoscopy the advantage of flexible flexible cystoscopy is you can do cystoscopy without giving patient the lithotomy position because flexibility of this device can accumulate the old narrow passages and the old structures of the urethra so in this lying down supine position you can do flexible cystoscopy in the local anesthesia also so this is the patient friendly now we are going to get some mcq on the cystoscopy what is the following is true regarding cystoscopy okay we are true and question is asking about true rigid cystoscopy can be performed at local anesthesia no we already know flexible because rigid cystoscopy is very painful procedure you should do under ga or the in the spinal anesthesia flexible cystoscopy is principally a therapeutic procedure no because thera flexible cystoscopy has a very narrow working channel you cannot work on the flexible cystoscopy flexible cystoscopy you should be genuinely very good diagnostic but very little therapeutic procedure so this option is very low this option is also wrong flexible cystoscope deflate down 180 degree and upward deflate 90 degree with given 270 degree field of view yes flexible cystoscopy give 270 degree field of view but not 90 degree upward it is got 90 degree it is not deflating the down 180 degree it is deflating up 180 degree and down 90 degree this is interchangeably different so upward towards the 180 degree and downwards towards the 90 degree that's why i calculate the 270 degree field of view so this is also wrong and bladder neck is visualized by j maneuver yes you can upward 180 degree it's called j maneuver so bladder neck can best visualized by j maneuver so this option is right so as we previously know flexical cystoscopy can deflate down 90 degree in upward but backward 180 degree this is going to be asked remember my friend only 90 degree downwards 180 degree upward and backwards so total view is 270 degree as we previously know 0 12 30 70 degree lens and we all know flexible uh, ureteroscopy benefit and uh, uh, rigid uh, cystoscopy now these are the two these are the two areas two advances which are multiple times they are going to ask this is images is given in april ams need as a super speciality examination what is this images this image is for narrow band imaging it is it is the advanced in the simple cystoscopy this this cystoscopy uses two wavelength 415 nanometer is for blue 540 is for green so the superficial part of the tumor the vascular structure is absorb the blue and the slightly deep part is absorbing the green so tumor and the other abnormal pathological area is appear as a brown blue green against the background so this is called narrow band imaging at the same time this is the blue light cystoscopy 
some photo porphyrin material inserted into the bladder and against the blue line the pathological part is appear as a pink so you can see this is this pink area is a pathology so if this image is, is given this is the blue light cystoscopy and this is the narrow band imaging image can directly given to you and asking what is this blue light or narrow band imaging the the advantage of this advanced technology is you can get easily diagnose more carcinoma in situ and more suspicious lesion but still the gold standard is simple cystoscopy it is not replaced the blue light cystoscopy simple cystoscopy is not replaced by blue light cystoscopy but adding more value towards the white light cystoscopy this is the ureteroscope now to differentiate cystoscope from the ureteroscope is ureteroscope is little less diameter little thin and very long compared to cystoscope and you can see the eyepiece is offset it is not lined with ureteroscope so this is the differentiating feature for you can identify the ureteroscope uh, now we move towards USG. USG is the first investigations in the any pathology in the urological organ so you can you can diagnose hydronephrosis solid versus cystic lesions percutaneous nephrostomy procedure simple procedure you can do under the USG guidance but the important word is, is it is not good for the ureter this is the important line when the stone and the pathology is stuck in the ureter, you should go for non contrast CT scan in the CT urography for the diagnosis. For the stone, you should go for the non contrast CT scan. Yes, it is best for the scrotal pathology. You should do a Doppler for the torsion. When the blood supply is de demolished and lost, the Doppler signal is lost. So, the other function of the USD Doppler is for to evaluate the torsion of the testes. The one statement is given in the Bailey and Low is for urethral stricture disease is also USG is very useful. And other advance is contrast enhancement in the renal cyst is also important advantage nowadays used and asked as a future MCQ. Now uh, transrectal ultrasonography of prostate. You can see this image the specific probe it is a biplanar probe is inserted into the anus to locate the lesions and to get transrectal prosthetic biopsy by this method and the important point is very critical NS critical antibiotic required because this is a very 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 contaminated procedure so prophylactic antibiotic you should need so what is prophylactic antibiotic ciprofloxacin orally in the hour before the procedure this is important this is can be asked as mcq and IV gentamicin immediately before the procedure is two line written in the belly and what is the complication most common is UTI 5% okay peripheral zone and transitional zone are very evident on the transrectal ultrasonography of the prostate and if you do transrectal ultrasonography of the prostate and prostate looks normal but patient is having raised PSA you should think about very minute suspicious pathology present in the anterior part of the prostate apex of the prostate which might not get in the view of the truss so you should do systematic biopsy so these are the important points and these are the important lines given in the belly which is potential MCQ this is the view of the transrectal ultrasonography of the prostate as you can see this is the probe this is the peripheral lobe this is the indentation of the urethra you can see this is the seminal vesicle over there and this is the transition lobe so what 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 you see in the ca prostate ca prostate looks like hypoechoic area compared to the peripheral zone the echogenicity is compared with the peripheral zone of the prostate gland this is the potential mcq what biopsy you should took you should take you should take six core biopsy two times so total 12 biopsy core is needed for the diagnosis to stamp the ca prostate this is the biopsy instrument and this biopsy is based on the glisten scoring system according to that you should divide the prostate cancer into glisten grading group so glisten grading group important point is that this is the low magnification only you can do glandular architecture of the prostate gland you cannot do cytology you cannot do high magnification 
लो मैग्निफिकेशन एंड ग्लैंडुलर आर्किटेक्चर इज यूज इन द्लिसन पैटर्न एंड ग्लिसन ग्रुप सो दिस आर द इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट अबाउट ट्रस्ट एंड पैथोलॉजी ऑफ द सी ए प्रोस्टेट द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द सेप्सिस इज आउटकम बाई ट्रांसपेरियल टेम्पलेट बायोप्सी ऑफ द प्रोस्टेट so sepsis problem is very big for the trus biopsy now they are going to transperineal template biopsy of the prostate blood the important statement is tur tbp is not replaced by trus biopsy so still the trus biopsy is a important aspect to biopsy the ca prostate malignancy so template biopsy is very useful for targeting the anterior aspect of the gland the patient is having high psa but trus is normal you should do template biopsy low risk prostate cancer you should do under ga because very painful you should go through the skin of the perineal area so total 36 biopsy you should take and advantage is lower risk of sepsis than the trus biopsy as we all know x ray qb is commonest indication for the stone and intravenous urography is not used as nowadays as much as previously but still diagnosis of the renal ptosis early tb and medullary sponge kidney these are the three condition still the intravenous urography is the investigation of the choice renal ptosis is diagnosed by two vertebral column descent of the kidney or more than 5 cm descent of the kidney the early tb changes you can see the mouth eaten calyx in calyctasis in all those pelvic calycial changes you can better easily evaluate by intravenous urography and medullary sponge is need dilating collecting duct of the nephron the condition is called medullary sponge kidney you can easily identify on in the intravenous urography at the bristles of the brush appearance is a typically for medullary sponge kidney uh this is the ct scan as we all know the non contra ct scan is used for stone this is the investigation of the choice when you try to see the space occupying lesion mass contrast enhancing lesion you should do triple phase ct scan for mass lesion these are the images given to the triple phase ct scan the images can directly asked in the exam the image a is the before the injecting the contrast the image is taken image b is the immediately after the contrast is given this is the cortico medullary phase of the contrast triple phase we can see the delineate between cortex and the medulla so this is the cortico medullary phase after the 180 seconds the nephrogenic phase of the kidney you can see the whole kidney is homogeneously enhancing so advantage of this type this phase nephrogenic phase is all rcc and all contrast enhancing lesion are best seen in nephrogenic phase the d is the post contrast excretory phase so any pelvic calycial and ureteric and all anatomy regarding the kidney is best seen with post excretory phase so these are the four phase seen in triple phase ct scan now we are going to get mcq baby ragu 6 month old you can see every word is important baby ragu 6 month old less than 1 year old male was diagnosed with having pyelonephritis what is the next investigation of choice so you should do what is the cause for pyelonephritis in the very one less than 1 year old patients so what is the what is the most it is a uti why uti is happening patient is having was i co ureteric reflex how can you diagnose the vasite ureteric reflex this is a micturating cysto urethrography you cannot diagnose vur by cystoscopy you cannot diagnose by ivp you cannot diagnose by ct kub so answer is micturating cysto urethrography so patient less than 1 year of age presenting with uti 25 to 40% patient presenting with vur so pyelonephritis is most common in patient with vur and diagnosed with diagnosed with micturating cysto urethrography these are the vur images taken this is the grade 5 vur this is the when you see there is a cupping of the calyces and dilatation of the all minor calyces and dilatation of the ureter now on the ct scan the most common lesion in the kidney is renal cyst this is the mcq most common 
lesion in the renal is the renal cyst most common enhancing lesion enhancing lesion in the kidney is oncocytoma oncocytoma now uh, bosniak have a classification of the classical renal cyst sure so you can get one question from this bosniak classification every time they are going to ask so what you should remember is cyst type 1 is a simple cyst no underlying septation no calcification no enhancement two is very minute hairline thin septation with very less calcification but the important point is one and two have zero percent chance of malignancy you should not follow up the patient forget the patient leave the patient what is the characteristic of 2f patient 2f cyst is it is not fit into the two and three so what is this this is more than three centimeter and increase the septation increase the hyper density of the septation in the 2f cyst what is differentiated between 3 and 2f cyst is contrast enhancement of the cystic wall so contrast enhancement word is important it is very specific for class 3 cyst and class 3 cyst has a 50 percent chance of malignancy you should intervene the class 3 and class 4 cyst class 4 cyst has a hundred percent chance of malignancy it is it is stamped as a malignant lesions of the kidney so what is the characteristic solid enhancing lesion is seen in class 4 cyst so what solid is for class 4 and contrast enhancement is seen in class 3 so these are the important aspects and multiple times mcq can ask in this areas now the word about mri mri is is not as useful in the urogenital system but ca prostate is a most important investigation of choice for staging of the ca prostate so what is multi-parametric mri three images is taken t1 t2 weighted images diffusion weighted images and dynamic contrast enhancing images is taken is called multi-parametric mri the spectroscopy is not included nowadays in the multi-parametric mri and evaluated this three things together it's five point scoring system is called pi rates and you can have mri and trust guided fusion biopsy is a new role for mri in the ca prostate so in the mri we can get this mcq nephrogenic systemic fibrosis is seen with a iodinated contrast no make three no gadolinium contrast yes hippuran yes so gadolinium contrast is the very risky for nephrogenic systemic fibrosis you should caution about patients with less than 30 gfr and you should not give gadolinium contrast with less than 15 gfr these are the potential two mcqs risk increasing with less than 30 gfr and highest chance of get nephrogenic systemic fibrosis with less than 15 gfr so you should not give gadolinium with the patient with the less than 30 gfr and you should not probably definitely not do uh, gadolinium contrast with less than 15 gfr so these are the nephrogenic systemic fibrosis is a systemic fibrosis and nodularity and the all subcutaneous tissue joints and all those things thickening hardening of the skin and joint contracture and involved any organ of the body eye heart diaphragm pleura pericardium kidney as well as lung and the liver this is a pictorial diagram of the typical nephrogenic systemic fibrosis skin appears scaly thickening of the skin nodularity all those things are seen in the nephrogenic systemic fibrosis the important point is you can get up to the one year very long duration up to the one year it can appear as a nephro nephrogenic systemic fibrosis rather the contrast reaction iodinated contrast reaction appear up to the 48 hours this is going to up to the one year now what about spec ct and pet ct so we cannot get metabolic and functional imaging by the ct scan and mri scan so this is metabolic and functional imaging you can get by spec ct and pet ct so in the pet most commonly used is fluorodeoxyglucose so there is only specific role in the urology is to detect the residual mass after radical orchidectomy in case of seminoma. This is the only one indication, specific indication for PET-CT. It can be asked. 
after you do radical orchidectomy in the case of seminoma there is a mass in the retroperitoneum if mass is more than 3 cm should the pet ct if the pet ct is positive you should be intervening the retroperitoneum and another two advances is 11 choline carbon choline 18 f choline these two are now used and fda approved for ca prostate and metastatic prostate cancer and bone scan nowadays high risk prostate cancer like t2 prostate cancer patient is having bone pain patient is having back pain patient is having more than 40 nanogram per ml psa you should do bone scan because patient is having metastatic lesion in the bone the dmsa renogram and dtp and mac3 renogram the dmsa renogram is specifically used for renal scaring and function to look the scar after the chronic pyelonephritis because DMS tend to bind to proximal convoluted tubule and accumulate at the renal cortex. So, scar is better visualized in DMS renogram. At the same time, DTPA and MAC3 is useful, used to measure split renal function. So, used to measure how many percentage of the left kidney is functioning, how many percentage of the right kidney is functioning. You can evaluate by DTPA and MAC3 scan. According to the date, you have to save the kidney or you have to do nephrectomy. If the percentage of the functioning kidney less than 20 percent you should rather you should save the kidney rather you can go for nephrectomy because less than 20 percent kidney cannot improve after you intervene if the patient is having functioning more than 20 percent you should intervene you should repair kidney you should repair the pathology of the kidney so this at this time dtp and mac3 scan is very important so mac3 renogram is done usually in the three phase first phase the contrast is going to the vascular area like aorta and to the renal artery. Second one is how renal handling the tracer. The third one is excretory phase. As you see, this is the graph. Uh, this graph is seen. This one is the rapid increase in the upstroke. This is for vascular phase. This is for concentration phase. This is how renal kidney going to handle the tracer. And this at the maximum point after this, this is the excretory phase. This is the how third phase is going like this. In the obstructed and chronically obstructed kidney, there is no excretory phase or delayed excretory phase. Phase like going like this. This is the obstructed system. So you can be differentiated by this. So this four diagram is given in the belly. So diagram number A looks normal. All excretory this is this one is for vascular this one is a renal handling and this one is the excretory phase so kidney is properly excreting this line is for aorta contrast and the tracer is in the aorta now you can see the one one kidney is functionally normal the other kidney is not excreting accumulating the contrast in the pellicular system this kidney is obstructed functionally obstructed this one is the delayed obstructed system dilated and non-obstructed bilateral system after some times when you give lasix to evaluate this kidney getting contrast excreted and this one is for partially left-sided obstructed right-sided system right sided obstructed system so this graph is careful my friend this graph is given directly to you and how to identify what is left system is obstructed light system is obstructed and this curve is called O'Reilly's curve O'Reilly's curve these are given in Campbell so as the MCQ SC to investigate kidney function and obstruction which nuclear scan is used as we previously know DMSA is used for scaring and scarring and the ectopic kidney DTP and MAC3 scan are used for the split renal function but nowadays MAC3 scan is very useful and very replacing the DTPA scan so answer is MAC3 so as we previously seen this graph this is the three phase and one is vascular one is how renal handling the contrast tracer and the high this third one is the excretory phase so uh, now, now we are going to see lower urinary tract uh, investigations. So, this is the simple investigation flow meter. 
you tell patient to micturate this bowel and you calculate the flow what is the amount of urine you he he micturate he he pass what is the peak flow rate and the what flow rate maximally he achieved and based on this you can diagnose the patient is having lower urinary condition like bladder outlet obstruction and all those things so this graph is having you can see patient can normal 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 cow is like bell shaped tower shaped cow patient start to micturate after some time patient is a peak of micturation after that patient is declining of micturation but this patient is having box shaped cow patient is having bladder outlet obstruction flow rate less than 10 8 ml per second this is a typically of bladder outlet obstruction we that might be a structure of the urethra that might be a prost benign prostatic hyperplasia we cannot know but we can stem this is patient having bladder outlet obstruction and if the patient is having low flow these are the two condition when the patient is having bladder outlet obstruction or other condition is patient is having under active detrusor bladder is is not contracting well enough to micturate to flow the urine so how to diagnose the under active detrusor you can diagnose by urodynamic test so what is urodynamics you can there is a two channel one channel is put on the rectum to measure the abdominal pressure and the one channel is put into the bladder to measure the the measure the bladder pressure so you cannot directly measure the detrusor pressure detrusor pressure is measured by substituting the abdominal pressure from the bladder pressure so that's how you feel the rate at the 50 ml per minute you feel after the patient have a desire to pass the urine you stop the feeling and you measure the pressure and you measure the pressure and you can see you can see on this on this graph on this diagram you can see this is the vesical pressure vesical pressure this is the abdominal pressure and after you substitute the abdominal pressure from the vesical pressure it's measure the detrusor pressure so this is the electromyography of the external sphincter this is the voided volume so you can see during the filling p dead should be at the baseline there is no fluctuation in the p detrusor because during the filling p dead should be at the normal because bladder should not be get contracted during the filling and electromyography of the external sphincter is positive during filling because you have to tight the sphincter during filling but you can see during the filling phase there is a activity in the p detrusor it means bladder is overacting it is called detrusor overactivity these are the important aspects from the chapter 75 from the love and bailey this is the very helpful they are not going to ask anything about i covered the whole areas in the chapter 75 so this important aspects you should remember you should remember the numerical values 20% for gross hematuria less than 5% for microscopic hematuria 15% for low grade to detect cytology 50% for high grade to detect cytology less than 50% gfr is not useful for to given cisplatin is very nephrotoxic drug less than 15% is for nephrogenic systemic fibrosis so you should be remember like this and this is very helpful to you uh, so thank 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 you my friend for giving your time